I would like to start out, first of all, by recognizing a few of our elected officials that are here tonight. Uh, Mr. Douglas, I see he's here. He's a city council member. But I would also like to, to uh, take a personal point of privilege and thank the Vietnam vets that I see in the house. If you're a Vietnam vet, thank you. And thank you for being here uh, at the Board of Education here meeting here in Commerce City. So uh, I'd like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If we could, please, all stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd also like to have a moment of silence. Thank you. Welcome, Lisa. Can I get roll call, Monica, please? Mr. Achuleta? Here. Dr. Hyde? Here. Mrs. Quintana? Here. Mr. Rolla? Here. Mr. Thomas? Here. I'd like an approval of the minutes for January the 23rd, 2018. I move that we approve the minutes for January 23rd, 2018. Second. Any discussion? All right, roll call, Monica, please. Mr. Achuleta? Aye. Dr. Hyde? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. I'd like an approval of the minutes for February the 8th, 2018. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Can I have a roll call, Monica, please? Mr. Achuleta? Aye. Dr. Hyde? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. <laughs> so we're going to move on to, oh, let's, let's do the approval of the agenda. You have the agenda in front of you. Uh, can I get a approval for the agenda for tonight's meeting? Motion to approve the agenda for the board meeting. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, under consent items, pull uh, the two items for certified transfer. And under, um, under licensed, uh, the one for um, James Murphy. Can't match. If you would, please, just the uh, location, not the uh, name, okay? So, so I have certified transfer, and what was the other one? The two, uh, two certified transfers under, um, under that section, and then one under, uh, I guess it's a retirement, <laughs> on page 20. Okay. We'll pull those out for further discussion. And then we can approve that, that person now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to approve the person now. We can approve everything else except that. <coughs> Legal Chair. question for you, um, Jonathan. If we remove one person or two people from, from the personnel, can we vote on the rest of the personnel, or is that stop the whole thing you can remove you have uh, the pending motion is to modify the agenda to remove from the from the consent portion of the agenda so you will need a second for that motion uh, and then there should be a proper roll call uh, whether or not that motion carries at that point you can then take up the previous motion as to whether the agenda would be approved okay so we have a motion on the floor to amend the agenda to remove two certified personnel and one retirement. Second. Any discussion? I have roll call, Monica, please. Mr. Achuleta? Aye. Dr. Hyde? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. 
Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Now, do we have to mod do we have to approve the agenda as amended? So can I get a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. Did you get that, Monica? Mm hmm Okay. So can I any discussion? All right, roll call Monica, please. Mr. Achuleta? Aye. Dr. Hyde? Aye. Mrs. Quintana? Aye. Mr. Rolla? Aye. Mr. Thomas? Aye. Thank you. Um, that moves us to recognitions and celebrations. Yes, uh, Board President, we do have three schools. We have DuPont Elementary, Kemp Elementary, and Kearney Middle School that will be recognized today. So we'll start with uh, Ms. Pat Almeida from DuPont Elementary. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Good evening, President Archuleta, distinguished board members, Dr. Abrego, and the Adams 14 community. It is my distinct pleasure and honor this evening to come before you to recognize a group that um, has their business here in the Commerce City area. The Commerce City community is a vibrant example of everyone working together to benefit our students. DuPont Elementary School was able to get our students ready for the holidays in style because of the efforts of the staff at Box State Barbers. On December 18th, 2017, our gym was filled with our students getting their hair styled through the volunteer efforts of the staff at Box State Barbers. DuPont Elementary School wants to recognize this partnership and the positive impact that the Box State Barbers staff had on our students and their families. We hope this partnership will continue. Please join me in thanking the members of the Box State Barbers staff. Um, so when I read off your names, please come and join us at the front um, so you can get your picture taken and bring your family members with you. We have Don McCarter. Lorenzo Robledo, Tim Gonzalez, Deidre Villa Gomez, Jovan Chavarria, Vanessa Ibarra. Dominique de la Torre, Carlos Vigil, Graciela Rocha, George Guerica, and Jasmine Garcia. I just have to tell you, for those of us that were at DuPont that evening, it was such, such a joy to see our children and their faces as their pictures were taking with, through the efforts of these fine people. So thank you so much for making the holidays extra special for our students and for our school. Before we uh, take pictures, I would like to uh, say that Thanks to these, uh, when we talk about community, three of these individuals were graduate of Adam City High School. I believe Tim Gonzalez was graduating in 2008. Uh, he was also played on the last baseball team to go to state. Yeah, he pitched and he lost to Cherry Creek three to two. So he had some great talent, but uh, he'd rather cut hair than try to play Major League Baseball. <laughs> Dawn, when did you graduate? To, uh, she graduated in uh, 1996, had her in class, hard worker, just like she is now, cutting hair. And I don't think I had Durango, when, what year? 94. 94. So uh, it's really nice when you can have former students come back and give to our young kids and giving them haircuts. And I know the hairdos that they do over at Fox, over there at the box, uh, I, I wish I could get some of them, but when you go bald, you can't. So, but they do a good job, and 
thanks very much for your help and students. So let's go down and congratulate them, and then we'll stand up behind here and take a picture with them all. Are we going to stand? Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank Got here. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you, DuPont. We also have uh, another recognition from an elementary school. That will be from Count, Mr. Robert Savage. Dr. Borrego, uh, Mr. Archuleta, President Archuleta, the board, thank you so much for letting me come and talk to you about some of the good things going on at Kemp. Um, do we have the PowerPoint? I don't have any. No? Uh-oh. I was planning on using a PowerPoint to guide me today. Who did you send it to? To you and to the um, other lady that was on it. But I can go on it without the PowerPoint. I don't need it. Um, so last November, I got a call on a voicemail from a very angry citizen who was upset because our flag was up at night and it wasn't properly illuminated. I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that you had to have a flag illuminated. So I called some people that I knew and it turns out that that is a thing. I asked people at the school and it, we haven't had the flag go up and down in probably two decades. So I called my fifth grade teacher in and I said, you know, Miss Wright, is this something fifth graders can help us do? Can we start raising and lowering the flag every day? Miss Wright um, said yes. Then she called George Horgan, a Vietnam veteran and a Kemp alumni from 1960 to 1962, to come train our students how to raise and lower the flag. Turned into quite the big event. We had Fox 31 there. Um, and he brought in several of his other um, Vietnam veterans in. And then we also had the Daughters of the American Revolution provide pamphlets for flag code to all of the kids as well, so they could learn about that. Since that day, students at Kemp have been raising and lowering the flag every single day with pride and doing it the correct way. So at this time, I'd like to call up our Vietnam vets that are here today that helped us that day and all, any of the students that showed up today too. So you guys can come up. I know, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Briggs, I know that George Horgan wanted to say a few words, so. It kind of gets tear-jerking for me to be recognized up here with these young men here that served with me in uh, Vietnam at one point or the other. Uh, we have our regional direct, uh, regional 
the AR representative that uh, helped us get that flag code book. Um, the, I, I was very impressed with these young children with uh, being there to learn how to handle a flag. We brought in a, a coffin flag, uh, which is the only one that could be folded with the 13 folds, and uh, Bob presented uh, the, 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 the format of how that was done. Uh, Steve proceeded to see your pole was not in good shape, so <laughs> he proceeded to get with the uh, BVA, uh, and we got the uh, president of BVA stand here uh, that uh, got involved with getting you guys' pole repaired, and they can tell you about that. And I would like to present you with an official Valley Forge flag to put on your pole now. Thank you very much. training of teaching some kids how to raise and lower a flag and not only did we get that but we also have a new flagpole now a new flag um, it's amazing what these, these Vietnam vets have done for our school and we're just very very appreciative so thank you very much Uh, Mr. Savage, yes. I'd like to state that I'm a no. Vietnam veteran. I am. So I know I don't didn't get a certificate, <laughs> but I am. So there's rep for representation from the board. Thank you, Kemp School. And we do have one more board president, Archuleta. We have Kearney Middle School. We would have uh, Miss Veronica Jeffers, the principal. Please come up.
Superintendent Abrego and distinguished members of the board, I come here this evening in recognition of an outstanding teacher and I would ask the Pollies to please stand up, Josh Polly and his family. If you could please remain standing. The reason for this recognition is that it appears that every year Mr. Polly finds himself with a rookie teacher just out of college training him to be an effective language arts teacher. He is thorough on the training and importance of building relationships with our students and families is number one. He goes above and beyond expectations when providing strategies and interventions to his new partner as well as all his colleagues. He has implemented, with fidelity, best practices. He has exemplary classroom management and knows how to move students to the next level of proficiency regardless of where they are when they start. Josh recruits students out of his classroom to publish the Kearney Chronicles, above and beyond the expectations of that of a teacher. This year, his students chose to donate Christmas presents to the less fortunate from their proceeds from the newsletters. Josh gets involved beyond the classroom. You can find him meeting with students during his lunchtime to either provide more support in reading or a variety of clubs that he is working with. Oh, did I mention that Josh also coaches the boys' wrestling team at Kearney and holds students to a very high standard. All in all, this young man here is the real deal. He meets and greets every student every single day as they enter the classroom, and now our entire school does that. He's very respectful to all and anyone who crosses his path. You'll never hear him complain, and he's always assisting anyone in need of his support. Josh is a very professional master teacher and sets high expectations for all. He is well liked by all students, staff, and our families. He has become the role model of all of us here in Adams 14 and Kearney Middle School, and we're blessed to call him a colleague, a friend, and a confidant. I cannot thank him enough, Mr. Pauley, for everything you do for us, our students, our families, and the community. You are an exemplary model to us all.
That's it for the recognitions, President Archuleta. Thank you. So before we get started with the audience comments, if anybody would like to leave, now's a good time to leave. Um, we get into the audience comments here in a, in a few minutes. <coughs> So tonight we're gonna we're gonna hear the comments of the of the community members, the students, and anybody else that wishes to speak. I will ask you that we do it under our policy B E D H. State your name, the school district where the speaker resides, before addressing the board. A maximum of three minutes per speaker will be allotted to present comments, concerns, or suggestions. No seating of time between speakers will be permitted. The total amount of audience participation at any board meeting will be limited to 30 minutes. The board president may use discretion and time al allocation in extraordinary circumstances. All statements shall be kept within the realm of district concerns. No individual or personal problems shall be presented. Complaints involving the reputation of any person connected with the district will not be heard by the board while sitting in public session. Public comment time is made available for the public to address issues, not personalities. Personnel attacks will not be permitted. I've, uh, I've let this go for the last couple of meetings. I would like to bring it back to order again. Uh, I do want to hear from the people. I do want to hear your concerns, but I will hold you to, two, uh, to three minutes time speaking. So with that, um, does everybody understand? So with that, I will bring up our first uh, audience comment, Angelica Gutierrez. Good evening, I am Angelica, and I am a senior at Adam City High School. I am very nervous, please bear with me. I am scared to say the wrong things and get in even more trouble at school. Um, last board meeting, I came um, I spoke about some unfortunate things happening at the high school. Um, here's another story on something that happened not that long ago, February 2nd. The state was going to be at the school, and one administrator told the senior, the senior class to wear our class color, which is white. Because we're ambassadors of the school, a student, a student council member posted it on our class page on Facebook. Students started joking around and saying we should wear the color red instead. Me being the social justice freak, actually said it was a good idea, a good opportunity for us as students to show the state how administrators really feel about us wearing red. Instead, 
um, they noticed, I mean, interesting enough, they noticed all the red clothing and got to the bottom of it. They saw I motivated all the students to wear red. The reason I had done this was because it was unfair that we were stereotyped as a community by new administra administration. They pulled students away from class and even sent them home to change. Um, not only that, but they did, they said that they were just trying to keep us safe from the game problems we didn't even have at school. Um, sorry. Uh, they pulled me out of class. Um, one of my favorite classes, actually, to discuss it. Yes, you guessed it. I got some consequences for the silent protest I held. Um, please remember that this is much more than just a dress code problem. This only shows how threatened admin at my school feels for students speaking their mind. Um, I do want to say how hurt I was, though, that the principal at my school was deciding consequences for my actions, but she did not even speak to me at all that day. Um, she has yet to speak to me about it, actually. Instead, she had the four people I care about at the school, Mr. Denmark, the athletic director, Mr. DeGuero and Mr. Duran, both assistant principals, and Mr. Lopez, Dean of Restorative Justice, talk to me. These four men are truly great, and I appreciate them for talking to me doing their, and honestly doing the dirty work for her, which, was me, which that meant talking to me. Because I respect these four men, the four men I mentioned before, um, I came here to speak. One of my two consequences was to come here and talk about the good things at Adams City High School. Um, there is many, many good things. Um, those good things cons consist of custodians. The custodians at Adams City High School are great, the teachers are great, and the counselors are great. Um, so yeah, they're nice, and it's the few things that, Ad that Adams City High School students actually look forward to. Um, despite of all the things we've gone through, we have four Daniels Fund finalists, nine state qualifier qualifiers for wrestling, we have students playing football, softball, and cheering in college with full rides. We have many students enlisting, enlisting in the military and many getting accepted to their dream colleges. Our student council has also done phenomenal things such as bringing the first annual wish week to school. These are only a few things that the, of the great, these are only a few things of the great things students, teachers, and coaches, and counselors have done at Adams City. Thank you. Thank you, Angelica. Excuse me, excuse me. Was the protest worth it? I'm sorry? Was the protest worth it? Tell I think so. Um, I've been asked if I would do it again, and I always said that I would do it again. <laughs> um, I think, um, I don't know, I mean, it has made the administration more open to talk to us. I don't know if many of the conversations we've had have been taken serious or, but I mean, we have had many conversations after it, so I am proud to say that it was worth it. Well, I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> thank yes. you. And, and I'd like to just tell you thank you, Angela, for coming up here and talking. Um, it's, I know you're nervous, but don't be nervous. You're in a safe place. Thank you. Mr. Archuleta. I would just like to say, uh, if you could remind them to please not state individuals' names, but their positions. Yes, and I and and it's not a reprimand to anybody. I just ask you that you don't set state names to anybody that's going to speak. Okay, so uh, in the future, if we can remember that. Thank you, uh, Esther Hall. My name is Esther Hall. Commerce City, and I am president of the Commerce City Historical Society. Sheila Harris is with me. She is also a board member of our Historical Society. She's going to pass around a coloring book that we do every year, every second grade student in the district. Whenever the teachers or the, the principal or the school uh, contacts back to us. We contact each teacher, second grade teacher, and the principals, uh, letting them know that this is an annual event that we do every April. And I would invite any of you school board members to also be a part of that. We've had them before go with us. Um, we go to every school, and we would like to see it improve because last year we only had five of the eight schools that even participated in this. It's an educational way to let the children know what happened before historically, 
I go to DuPont School, and I ask them if they knew what the Pony Express was, and I have them look at the coloring book. The Pony Express went two blocks down from them and uh, delivered the mail on horseback. I go to all of these different schools and give them a history lesson of their school and what went on before them. When I ask the students who were the first people on their school grounds, they always say God. And of course, um, most of the students don't know, but it was the American Indians. And it's in our coloring book. We do a competition, we give them prizes, we put the, the coloring pages up in recognition. And some of the schools are not responding to that. We spend a lot of time getting grants, having them printed, and giving them awards. The whole city gets involved in giving these awards and prizes to these students. And if, if the board would have any way of letting us know how to get all of the schools on board, because it, it, it's really moving when I go to every school and tell them DuPont and there was a plane that crashed on their playground before the school. You know, there's history in that, and we love to teach the history of what happened before. Many of you grew up here and knew the history, and they don't, but it's a way to recognize them. So if you have any ideas that would help us work with the principals, with the teachers, because we contact every one of them all the time, every year, and we don't get the response we'd like to have. So my three minutes is up. Any questions? Thank you, Esther. Thank you so much. And we'll see if we can't help you uh, make, that, make that work. Uh, contact us. We'd love to uh, get some feedback on how to make this c turnaround. Thank, thank you, you so and much. enjoy the coloring book. All right, thank you. Jorge Garcia. Good afternoon, members of the board. My name is Jorge Garcia, and um, my school district is St. Vrain. I'm the executive director of the Colorado Association for Bilingual Education, which conducts business in this district. I want to reaffirm for you that the issues and concerns that I speak of here relate to this district and this community and have been brought to our organization by our members who live and work here in Adams 14 and by concerned parents of Adams 14 students. I must address statements made to this board by the superintendent in a February 5th, 2018 memo that relate specifically to me. In that memo, the superintendent states, and I quote, finally, Mr. Jorge Garcia belittled the superintendent and continues to spread information that is not true. Specifically, he stated the superintendent does not support bilingual education and that the district is out of compliance with the Office for Civil Rights Agreement, <clears throat> end of quote. I acknowledge that I made comments that no doubt were embarrassing to the superintendent, stating that he's violating Colorado law by failing to register his vehicle and pay those taxes on the vehicle, and I stated that his last position prior to becoming superintendent here was that of physical education teacher. I can prove those statements, and I'm willing to do so if given more than three minutes. The superintendent states that, quote, I continue to spread information that is not true. That statement in writing I consider libelous and deserves a response. These refer to the public statements that I have made, or please refer to the public statements that I have made, including the January 9th document entitled Questions and Answers about Adams 14 School District. I quote, this means that he is not supporting bilingual education in grades four through 12, specifically. That is my statement, and I would be very happy if he made a statement of support for those grades publicly, and he hasn't. The district is out of compliance with the Office for Civil Rights Agreement. I have stated that and will stand by that statement. If the district fails to implement the plan for biliteracy in grades K through five, the plan <coughs> provided to the Office for Civil Rights by this district, then the district is out of compliance, in my opinion. 
I heard Director Thomas request a report on the district civil rights compliance. We've not seen such a report, and if the board has received such a report from the administration, I would urge that it be made public. If my claim is proven wrong, I will come before you and I will apologize to you, the community, and to the superintendent publicly um, and, and, and get on my knees to beg for forgiveness. But until that happens, I will continue to urge this board to take not just ordinary, but extraordinary efforts to ensure that history is not repeated for the sake of the students and the staff of this district. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Jose Silva. Good evening, board and Superintendent Abrego, Jose Silva, and my home district is Denver Public Schools. <clears throat> I'm here today as a saddened member of the Latino community. I'm here today because I'm disgusted, a little angry, and in some ways I feel like I should probably file a libel lawsuit against Adams 14 and the superintendent in particular. I'm here today to call the superintendent, which I believe, in my opinion, a liar to his face. I have here a memo that you wrote to Timio, the board president, and others with information that you listed as facts, which are not facts. In this memo, you stated that I threatened your COO, Gianni Thompson, the board, and you. I am here to inform you, at the lowest level of political science, a recall is a tool that we have been given in democracy to be able to hold elected officials accountable that have failed us. What the memo truly shows is your character, your acts, and you have been proven to be a liar. You have okay. decided that... Can I, get you, can I get you to calm down for yeah. a minute? Um, so what we're doing, what I read in the policy we're doing Perfect. here is, is we're going to follow the policy. I can go there. That's fine. Okay. okay. So okay. What you're, where you're at right now is not within the policy. Okay. That's fine. I understand. Okay. So, um, so what I really want to present to the board is that I've had conversations with Gianni Thompson who has produced a counter contradiction letter stating that the things that were submitted in the memo were inaccurate, false, and not true. My concern for this school district and this community is the fact that the, the superintendent himself is allowed to create his own truths and make up his own facts and present them to the community. The fact of the matter is we have one memo and we have a contradicting statement from your COO. I think I, as well as other individuals that were you, there was def defaming character and, and wrongful words in here, deserve an apology from the board as well as the superintendent. Obviously, the superintendent sees us as a threat, and we are not going anywhere. I will end with this. Your email, and now G Gio's email, shows there should be reason enough for the board to seek a vote of no confidence against you, because clearly, the community has none. Thank you. Tanya Hogan. Uh, good evening. My name is Tanya Hogan and I live in the Jeffco School District. Tonight I'm speaking in a different role. Currently I'm pursuing my doctorate at the University of Colorado Denver in a leadership and educational equity program specifically focused on Latina learners and communities. Educational equity is why we are here every week, part of advocacy organizations and many more that have formed this coalition. Please understand that when we come and speak, it is to bring up issues and concerns that are being overlooked by district leadership. One concern I have is that two ELD positions at the high school, you have the AP listed as the teacher of record. The AP is CLDE certified, but that is not who is actually instructing students. The subs and teachers who fill in are not certified and are not providing appropriate instruction for the bilingual students. In addition, because there is not an ELD coordinator or one that has taken his position, there has been inappropriate access testing in some schools of kids who had already been redesignated. So that's just a lack of oversight on the, on the district. And it's an OCR violation. Think about the message that is sending to the families of bilingual students. Your actions show that you don't believe the bilingual students should have effective teachers or effective instruction. What you do care about is that if someone was doing an audit, it would show that the teacher of record was qualified. 
please take the time to hire appropriately, but people in positions that can make sound decisions for children. Similarly, at the last board meeting, when a parent shared what happened with her son at Monaco Elementary, no one came up to her from the district afterwards to talk to her, to console her, to apologize, find out more about what was happening. However, when the principal of that same school left the board meeting crying, Aracelia Burgos, the chief academic op oops, sorry, uh, sorry, the chief academic officer ran after her to console her. Again, actions speak louder than words. You want educational equity, yet these two examples show that your actions are not matching your words. There are some people sitting in this room behind me who work in positions where they could also stand up and say something and speak up for the students and families, and they don't. You are also complicit in this dysfunctional schooling system. You need to speak up and speak out. Be the change that this district so desperately needs. The district has such wonderful students, families, and strong teachers. It has the potential to become a leading district, but with the current leadership and district personnel that care more about pleasing and making their way to the top, it won't happen. Decisions are not being made in the long-term best interests of the kids. They are being made in sh the short-term interests of the superintendent. This is why he will spend time negotiating a salary increase, but won't spend the time learning the history and advocacy of bilingual education and the impact on children. I urge the board, please look into these issues more deeply. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. That concludes audience comments.